Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Pathfinder and Shape Builder tools in um, Illustrator 2019. So you want to begin by opening up the starter file, and uh, you could create your own if you needed to, um, and you can kind of do what we're doing here. Now, the Shape Builder and Pathfinder tools are how you make more complex objects in Illustrator. You'll see that I have um, two different objects for all of these on the first part, and then I have four different objects, and I've given them a different fill, just so you can see what happens when we apply the fills. So the first page is all about the Pathfinder tools. If you select more than one object, you'll see that the Pathfinder automatically opens up over on the the right hand side um, when you're using Illustrator 2019 in your properties and you are set to the Essentials uh, workspace. I used Essentials Classic and then I changed some uh, things as well so that I have my own custom uh, panels here. But one panel that we can also bring up is the Pathfinder panel. And so you'll see that we get to see four shape modes and six different Pathfinder modes. Now, you'll notice if you are um, over on your um, panel or properties bar on the right, or properties panel on the right, you can actually see these same tools right there by clicking on those three arrows. So um, for all of these, we're going to apply the four uh, across and then the six across. So the first one is called Unite, and this is the most important one. This takes anything that you have currently selected and makes it one shape, one compound shape. That's really, really effective. For the second one, you'll see that we have the ability to hover over it, and it says it's minus front, and um, it also says alt-click to create a compound shape. So if I use um, the alt-click on that, you'll see what happens is it shows me the two objects that are there, which I could then actually double-click and move that object if I wanted to, and I could change the how that Pathfinder is going to be applied before I click on Expand. And that's really helpful if you're trying to refine your object and you're not sure if that's exactly what you want. Now, you could leave it in that unexpanded mode. So if I press the Alt click when I do Intersect, I could leave it in that unexpanded mode and then later on um, expand it if I, if I even want to. So for the next one, I'm going to go ahead and just click on it, which is exclude, and you'll see that's the end result. Now, with the next one, we're going to use the Pathfinder methods. And so these work in a similar but different way. This is one of my favorite ones. The first one is divide. And what it does is create a new object from each intersection. So if you zoom up, that's I use the control mouse wheel. Um, double click on it, and now you can move the different pieces and you'll see that each intersection was a completely new piece. Then you can double click outside of it and you're back to the main area. Now, with most of these, we're wanting you to use um, the Unite after you've done anything else because we really want these to be one simple, single compound object. And so that's where Unite would come in and you'll see all of the colors look the same. On the next one, uh, this one right here does a little trim, and you'll see that it has gotten rid of my strokes, which is interesting, and you'll see now that object inside is trimmed. On the next one, we have merge, and that kind of seems like it does the same thing. Um, exactly where that should be used versus the other, I'm not always sure. On the next one, we'll use the crop, and you'll see that has now left me with that new object on the inside. And it even has these right here, which actually um, are still there, but they don't have a stroke and a fill. So you have to kind of worry about that, because if you go to Unite, you might unite all of it together. Whereas what you want to do is go and remove these parts, possibly. Then when you come back, and if you did the Unite, nothing will happen that's different. So you just have to be aware of that when you use that tool. The next one does outline, and then the last one is basically the opposite of the minus front. This one does minus back. So if we wanted to get that same effect as this one with the minus front, 
all we'd want to do is put one object behind the other. So in this case, I might want to select the background object and move it forward. So I can do a range and I can bring it to the front. And then I could apply that and I get the exact same result. Because if I do the minus back, then of course it does the opposite. So you just kind of have to be aware of that, that the order of your layers does matter when you're applying some of these different shape modes. Um, when it comes to the um, Unite, that order doesn't really matter. Now with this next row, what we're going to look at is what happens when we apply the shape modes and Pathfinder tools when we have more than one object. If you select all four, it's very easy to use the Unite because that just adds all of those objects together as one single one. But on this next one, if I select all four and I want to click on minus front, you'll see it's not really sure that I'm getting exactly what I wanted. You know, what about if I wanted to have the other side also show that? So what we find sometimes is that we have to do things in steps and we also have to like make copies of objects in order to do it. I'm going to select these two and group them together. Then I'm going to copy that into memory and then I'm going to apply it to one of those. Now I'm going to go to the next one and before I do that same effect I need to paste those copied objects so I can do paste in place so I get those objects back again, then I can select the next group and minus that, then add the two together. That's a lot of steps, right? Well, we could also do this if I went and selected all of them and just went straight to the divide. Now that gives me a separate object for each independent overlapping object. Now I can double click on it and I can start to remove the different pieces that I don't want until I have what I wanted to get. And then I can finally go and unite them. Whoops. Looks like I'm missing one little object right there in the middle. Whoops. There we go. Got to go inside, get rid of that, then select these and put them together. So experiment with the Shape Builder um, Pathfinder tools and see what else you can create with the rest of the objects. And experiment with copying and pasting or making possibly two groups like this, because I can make two groups and then I could minus one and you'll see the end result. And so try and make each one differently. Now the next page is all about the Shape Builder tool. And this is a much more interactive tool. Um, it works similar to the, sh to the Pathfinder, um, where you need to select the objects that you want to apply the Shape Building with. But this is its own tool. And when you go to the Shape Builder, you'll see that you can now hover over that object. And as you hover over it, you'll see a little plus, and you'll see a bunch of dots appear. If you hold down the Alt key, you'll see that it turns to a minus. What this is going to do is add and subtract objects from each other as you click and drag on them, click on them, or click and drag through them. So for example, if I click, I can click and drag, and it's combined all three of those into one object. Now if I want to get rid of these in between, I can hold down the Alt key and just click and remove those and then I can click and drag through the other three and I've created new shapes. Then you can go back to your magic wand or back to your black arrow and you'll see that you have two separate objects currently and I'm just undoing it with control Z. And then you'd want to go to the shape builder unite finally and make those one compound object. So this is a really interactive tool. It's pretty amazing what you can do. For example, let's say I just want to get these four here in the middle. So I'm going to go select all of that and then click on the circles on the outside with the Alt key held down. Then I can select all four with just the regular black arrow and unite them together. And uh, that's a really easy way to get to those four objects. So a really great, simple way. Now, um, one of the things that's also important about using this tool is when I click on the tool, you'll see that I have a fill color 
already selected. I can change that fill color by going up to my swatches and choosing a different fill color at any time. Um, I could do it inside my appearance panel right there because the swatches are kind of built in. Or I could double click on the color and change it to any color that I want manually. Now what happens is since I've changed that color, when I add my colors or when I add my shapes together, you'll see they become that new color. So you can define the colors that you want before you make your shapes. And that's just kind of cool because you've got kind of this more interactive design tool and object tool at the same time. And you can see that's a really cool way of creating a new shape. In this case, because I'm going for the four different colors, I probably would not use the shape builder or the pathfinder unite. So continue with the rest of these and see what you can do. <clears throat> and we will visit another tool, which is called the live paint bucket um, at a later time. Actually, I did do that here. Yeah, that's right. I do have the live paint bucket tool. Now with the live paint bucket tool, um, uh, that's this last row right here that I was going to use. Um, it works kind of the same way as the shape builder, meaning you have to select everything. And then you go to the live paint bucket tool. And then you also want to choose the color before you apply that tool. And what's cool about this is that you can just click on the different objects you want to make any color you want, which is really cool. Now, if I go to the other, I can do that one and that one. Um, I'm going to use a green and I'm going to make that green and that green. Um, let me make this a lighter green and a lighter green. And then I'm going to make purple and purple. So what's cool about this is that these are live colors. If I were to move around the objects, you'll see that the color will change around as well. And the reason why is because once again, this is a live fill. You have to be careful though, because you can see that I deleted somehow I deleted my stroke from the way that I moved it. You're not actually building new files, but you are changing the way that those strokes or the fills are applied in a dynamic, cool way. So experiment with that just a little bit and see how you can recolor the different objects that are there below. On the last page, what I would like you to do is experiment with your own shapes and build your own things here. Um, see what happens when you create different overlapping shapes or not overlapping shapes. So for example, um, oops, let me go back to the black arrow and duplicate that. I can create a bunch of objects there. Then I could put this one on top. Let's try and get that kind of centered. There we go. And then I could see what happens if I draw a line that goes across. And then I could do another line somewhere else. Then you want to select all of that and then go to your shape builder and see what you can create. Well, let's see. I want to keep that, keep that, keep that. But I'm going to delete this part and that part, this part and that part. And I'm going to delete that part and that part. And then um, I'm going to delete that, delete that, and that. And then once I'm done, I will select everything. So let's make sure I go and select everything and then go to the Pathfinder and then fill that. And you'll see there I've created a new compound object, which is pretty darn fancy. You can see there's a lot of objects that were inside there. So anyway, create your own shape, at least 10 of them, and experiment with what you can create by taking multiple um, simple drawings uh, or objects and creating new compound objects from those. All right.